or liberty in God, our biggest job is to stand fast in that liberty or in that freedom. That's our responsibility. And uh, nothing changes, nothing changes in the heavenlies. How many remembers the uh, diagram that our elder showed us Sunday? How many was here Sunday? And remember this? I guess that, that's, that's the Lord right there. We have salvation right here. That line stays there. Now here's where, here's where our problems come in. You told me a little while ago you were tired, aren't you? you you're just tired, aren't you? That's okay. Anybody else in here tired? <laughs> One, two, three. That's a feeling. That doesn't mean you're still not saved. That, <clears throat> remember, that stays the same. But your emotions, your body has feelings. And it's, re it's down here, tired, weary, don't want to go to church. Can I stay home and go to sleep? How many ever been there besides me? All right. But your victory is still there. You still have the victory. Nothing changes that. Eternal salvation, we have it. Okay? So we may feel down. We may feel upset. Our emotions might be upset. But our position in Christ, our position now stays the same. All right? Let's just take that example and bring it down here. Uh, how many of you know I'm married? Sorry, girls, I'm married. Okay? I don't care. I wake up one morning and I feel like I'm not married. Now, I said I feel like I'm not married. How many knows that I'm still married? The line stays the same. My position as a married man has not changed. Okay? But I don't feel like I'm married. Or I don't feel like I'm saved. And you're really saved. See, we have to learn to overcome our feelings. Our emotional rim, your emotions are good servants, but they are bad masters. Bad masters. How many understand what I'm saying? They will lift you up, and that's wonderful. But let me tell you something. They will drag you down. Somebody say amen if you understand what I'm talking about. You've been living long enough to understand that. So you're going to have to learn to discern between your position in Christ, which does not change, and your feeling rim that changes like the weather. But that has nothing to do with your position in Christ. Once you accept Christ, you're born again. That's stamped in heaven. In fact, it's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That never changes, okay? And, and we need to remember that. So look what it, but the, but the the, 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 the encouragement of the Apostle Paul to all of us is, in this freedom, Christ has made us free and completely liberated us. Stand fast then and do not be hampered and held ensnared and submit again to a yoke of slavery which you have come once put off. Now, when you, when you read that scripture... You read it in the contents. Put, it, put the King James up there. Uh, Stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set us free and be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. There's the uh, uh, Galatians, no, Galatians 5.1. My position stays the same. I don't care if that did go down. <laughs> Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So what is this yoke of bondage that Paul is talking about? Now put number, uh, verse 2 up there. Verse 2. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, oh, there's the bondage. To be saved, you've got to be circumcised. Are we listening? This was the big thing back in Paul's day. The Judaizers came in and was messing with the Christians and said, yeah, we believe that Christ died on the cross for our sins, but you still have to be circumcised according to the law of Moses. And Paul says, no, 
Don't you dare add anything to the work of Christ, what he did on that cross. And that's where people get into trouble. So let's put it in our everyday uh, society of, of, of our religious. Okay. Right, let, let, me, let me finish this. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Oh, my goodness. Now you're messing with your position. Now, you, now they're messing with your position. If we allow it. Now, circumcision is, uh, is good, but it does not save us. It's a good health practice, but it does not save us. Okay? Now, you can take that word uh, circum uh, circumcised, which Paul deals with in the book of Galatians, but he also talks about Moses' law. The law, Paul says, is for the transgressor. But that's another message. We're not saved by the law. All right, let's put it down. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if you believe that, circ uh, that um, circumcision or keeping the law saves you, then Christ shall profit you nothing. If you understand what I'm saying, wave at me, because I can labor at it now. Because what I'm dealing with tonight is, is, is very important. All right. Behold, I say to you that if you think being water baptized saves you, then Christ profits you nothing. We have to understand what water baptism does. It does not save you. We agree to that? You know that? Very important to understand. Now, I know when you read the Bible, there's a lot that we have to understand. When you, when you go through the Scriptures, salvation came to man. And the revelation of salvation and the revelation of what Christ did on that cross, it took a little while for it to unfold before man could understand it and God had to uh, show man the time, the time uh, line, the timeline, okay? So as we come down and the revelation comes, after Christ ascended into heaven, he began to still talk and give revelation to man. And, and the apostle Paul was one of those apostles that received some fresh revelation which Peter and some of the other apostles did not have at that time, but they preached what they had. But as you move down through the time, you will see even Paul changing some things, and you will see that salvation is totally in Christ, minus circumcision, minus water baptism, minus trying to keep the law. So when you talk about those three things, then we have to bring them over here into another category and try to understand what good is circumcision, what good is water baptism, uh, what good is the law. All of that we talk about. We, we have to put, put headings up there and come down and, and talk about it. But it does not make us right with God. How can the law cause you to be born again? Now, the law is important. Bob, do you keep the law? Yeah. But if I mess up, I go to 1 John 1, 9. Put 1 John 1, 9 up there. I'm not trying to keep the law to be saved. Now, the law showed me that I was a sinner. I, I didn't know, like Paul says, I, I didn't know what covenant, covenant was until the law showed me that it's wrong and I shouldn't do it. And now the conflict begins. The war begins. And so... And so that caused me to, to see that I was a sinner, that I was trespassing God's holy law. And so I turned to my Savior, Jesus Christ, and God says, put your faith in him, and you'll be born again, and his spirit will come into you. The lawgiver will come into you, 
and show you how to walk one day at a time in the Spirit. And as you will learn to walk in the Spirit, you will not trespass the law. You will not do harm to your neighbor. Because Christ lives in you, in your spirit. And as you follow him, he will direct you to live a holy life. Once you understand that. So, <clears throat> now what was happening is, Paul was addressing these Christians in Galatians, and they weren't standing fast in their liberty, and they were believing, well, i got to be uh, uh, circumcised now before I can really be saved. <clears throat> well, i got to keep the commandments. Boy, that's putting a yoke on you. That's the yoke that he's talking about. Turn to... Uh, Galatians 5, 1 again, the bondage. Well, let's, let's, let's go with that right there. I'm sorry, I'm going, to, I'm going too fast here. All right, so what happens, what happens as a Christian now? Let's just say that, of course, nobody in here would ever tell a lie. But let's just say somebody slipped and told a lie. What about your position in Christ? Stays the same, but your fellowship with God now ain't too good. You got something between you and your heavenly Father, or between your fellow man. If if I offend this brother here, I know I offend him, and he knows I offend him. Then I got to go to him and say, "Brother, I'm sorry." If I'm not right with him, I am not right with God. So remember, the cross goes this way. We have to be right. If you read the scriptures, that's one thing that God will not tolerate. Is for one sister or another sister to be at odds with one another. Now sometimes you can't help it because the other person just refuses to, to humble themselves and say, I'm sorry. But i got to come and say, brother, I'm sorry. I, did, I didn't mean to say that. Will you forgive me? Or I meant to save it, and I, but my flesh just got a hold of me, and I'm just telling you like it is, and I blew it, and I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? Now, what happened? Our, we are now back in agreement. We, have fe we could have fellowship now. Same thing with God. I lied. Anybody in here ever lied? Raise your hand. Why did you do that? Now, if you're under the law, you're guilty of all ten. Well, I never committed adultery, but I'm a pretty good liar. Come on, church, just tell it like it is, Bob. I aimed it. If I'm wrong, correct me. Then you're guilty of, of adultery. Oh, I know we don't like that. Our religious self don't like that. But aren't you glad you're not under the law? Let me tell you another secret. I know I'm going fast, but we know that scripture. I'm trying to mail. Go to uh, Romans uh, chapter 7, verse 4. Back it up with the Word of God, Bob. I think I will. Boy, I'll be glad when we get that other thing up there. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law. Say, I'm, I'm dead to the law. You better thank God you did to it. The law is still there. God didn't remove the law, but he killed us. And we have no connection of trying to keep it or not keep it. But we keep it. But we don't try to keep it. We try to please God. And in the, in the, in the essence of trying to please God, the, <clears throat> the result of that is, Keeping the Ten Commandments. But if you put yourself under the Ten Commandments, you're putting yourself under a bondage again. Because you can never please God by trying to keep the commandments because you can't keep them. And now you're going around and, and, and just feel condemned all the time. How many Christians I deal with, and they don't know it, but they're still trying to please God by keeping the Ten Commandments. And Paul says to the uh, Jews, you don't even keep it. No, we're not saying the Ten Commandments are bad. The Ten Commandments are good. But I'm not going into that teaching, but I do want you to know this. Wherefore, shield of faith, my brother and sister, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, 
that ye should be married to another. Who are we married to? All right. Even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. When you study salvation, you have to realize the legal aspects. Everybody say legal aspect. Okay. All right, here's, who can I pick on? Who wants me to, who wants me to pick on you? I don't want, you know, I'm bad about that. Anybody? All right. Let's, all right. Mike, Mike is going down the highway in the, in the, in the, and the speed limit is 55 and he's going 75. Here comes the cop, pulls him over, gives him a ticket. Now he's bound by the law to stand before the judge. So on a certain date, he stands before the judge. And the judge says, uh, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. The judge knew it all along, but anyway, well, you know, you got to say it, we got to get it on the recorder. <coughs> so he's guilty. And so the penalty of breaking the law, see, there's a penalty. What is the penalty of, de uh, of sin? Death. Huh? Death. 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 How did death enter into the world? Through one man's sin. Very good. Through one man's sin. So it's here. Now, I'm, we're talking about the law now. See? We're talking about freedom, being set free. All right. Now, here's Mike. He's guilty. And uh, he's got a, uh, and, and the penalty is 30 days in jail or $1,000. He doesn't have. A thousand dollars. But this young sister has a thousand dollars. Wow. <laughs> That's great. You ever seen a thousand dollars? You have? What does it look like? A thousand dollars? She's precious. He doesn't have a thousand dollars, so what is the fine? Thirty days in jail, or pay the th a thousand? He can't pay the thousand, so he's going to jail. But she comes up and pays the fine. When she, when she pays the fine, she's like Jesus. When she pays the fine, that satisfies the settlement. That pays the fine, and he is now set free. From that one penalty of going to jail, he had, but she paid the price that he didn't have. She paid the money and set him free. Now he's free. Now stand fast in that liberty wherewith she has set you free, and don't go down the road doing 75 miles an hour anymore. But if you do, remember 1 John 1, 9 real quick, like, and make sure the law is not there to catch you. All right. See, that's the legal thing we have to understand that man, because of the sin of one man, we all became guilty, we all broke the law, and we have a fine to pay, but we don't have no money, so we're going to have to go to hell. But Jesus comes, pays the price, pays the fine that he didn't owe. He paid a debt that he didn't owe, and we owed a debt that we couldn't pay, and he set us free. And now Paul says, stand fast in that liberty. Don't get all tangled up in all these false doctrines. You've got to be circumcised. You've got to keep uh, the law. Now, he brings the example as you read the Word of God, in Romans especially. He says, what about Abraham, our father? What about Abraham, our father? Well, they knew about Abraham, the father. The law wasn't even given when Abraham was on the earth. The law didn't come to 430 years later. So there was no law for him to keep. So how was he saved? Now circumcision came into being, but it was not, it was not for salvation. It was a mark put upon him to show 
that he had a covenant basically with God through this, through this circumcision. But it had nothing to do with putting him right. And, and Paul labors on that in the scriptures <clears throat> when, you, when you read that. Now, wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law. When did we become dead to the law? Now, that's another question. When you read the Bible, ask the Bible questions. Ask God questions. When did we become dead? When did we die? Well, you know, you can go back technically and say before the foundation of the world. Uh, but you can go back 2,000 years and we'll just leave it at that. When Christ died, who died with him? We did. We did which we broke. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let me move on where we can understand this. How many knows about soul ties? Soul ties. You know about soul ties. There's good soul ties and there's bad soul ties, all right? Sometimes we have to be cut free from bad soul ties. We, 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 through certain sins, we can uh, uh, tie ourselves to ungodly people. Okay, bad company corrupts good morals. We even have to watch who we hang around with. I remember the story one time, this uh, young woman, and uh, she got saved and everything, and uh, she was doing really great, and she had a couple of friends, and a couple of those uh, friends were uh, lesbians, and, and uh, these lesbians go to these nightclubs and hangs around with other lesbians. And she said, well, you know, I love, I love that sister. And I'm going to go into that place and I'm going to try to win her and the others to Christ. Listen, don't do it. See, we live in a spirit world. That's where a husband is supposed to be protecting the wife. Not just in the natural also with the spiritual. How many of you understand that? Just a little bit. Okay. Well, I won't labor on that. So that's why we want to be under authority and be submissive because of the demon powers. I remember one time this woman, uh, Susan Mead, ministered to many years ago, back in the 70s or somewhere. And we spent this time with her and... Uh, she needed to be delivered from an evil spirit. I said, well, how? What happened for you to uh, get connected and, and get a soul tied to this evil spirit? Well, she said, you know, I got divorced, and, and I, I, for a year later I got so lonely and everything, and I met this woman, and she said, you know, this is what I have learned. If you go in your home and draw a circle, and you get in that circle, Ask the Lord to come. He'll come, and he'll keep you company. Well, it was a Lord, all right. It was an evil spirit. That's why we have to test the spirits. And that evil spirit came and portrayed, how many of you know, Satan is good at deceiving people because he comes as an angel of light. And this demon spirit, Fool that woman that this that he was actually Christ and he was there to comfort her and everything and I'm not going to go no further but it went off into sexual uh, situations with an evil spirit. Now that woman had to be cut loose from that spirit. See this thing, you know, we the church does not understand that it's a spirit world and we deal with powers of darkness. It, it, but we look at everything in the natural. We think everything is natural. There's so many things that are spiritual. That's why God says don't do it. Bad company corrupts good morals. Explain that to me. Explain that to me. Bad company corrupts good morals. Now, if anybody asks you a question, always remember this. Say, sir, I don't know. That's simple. Go ahead. If you don't know. Huh? You don't know. Always remember that. If somebody asks you a question, I know she knows. But she don't want to in the front of everybody. You know, I'm not trying to, but 
it does wake them up, get their mind back on me here to listen to my, because this is important. How many, how many, uh, boy, I don't want to get too far off, in, but stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set us free. The law can bring us back into bondage, trying to uh, do the very things that Christ has set us free from, and the religious teachers come along like the Judas and say, well, you know, you still got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. Paul addresses all those issues, and especially in the book of Galatians. All right, now, <clears throat> so we've been separated by the law. Let me uh, hold on just a minute. I'm going to check this out in Romans. Turn to Romans chapter, uh, put on the board Romans chapter 3, verse uh, 20. Let's start with 19. 19. Romans. Are we there? 19. All right. Now we know, now Paul's talking here. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. Now, if any of my brothers feel that I'm wrong here, please show me the scriptures. But I don't see nowhere in the word of God that Gentiles were ever under the law. Okay, now if you find it, please let me know because I can be corrected. But I've studied this out. I don't see anywhere that we have ever been under the law. Now I know you all kind of questions probably hit your mind and I understand all of that. But when you read the scriptures, many times Paul is talking strictly to the Jewish Christians. You got that? And many times he's talking to the Gentile Christians, and many times he's talking to the Jewish Christians and the Gentile Christians. And some of the things that he says to, to the Jews don't apply to us. If you got, what do you got? You got a scripture there for me? Okay. All right, look at that again. So that the murmurs and excuses of every mouth may be hushed and all the world may be held accountable to God. For no person will be justified. Now put that verse 20 up there. 320. For no person will be justified. Now he makes it very clear. Made righteous, acquitted, and judge acceptable in the sight by observing the works prescribed by the law. For the real function of the law is make men recognize and be conscious of sin. Now, this is another reason that if you're trying to please God by trying to keep those Ten Commandments, you are more conscious of sin than you ever have been in your life because that's one of the reasons why the law was given to make man conscious and reveal to man what sin is. And you may feel many times dirty, unworthy, and not knowing, but subconsciously you're trying to please God and get right with God by keeping the Ten Commandments, and you cannot. Now you're in bondage. Now you're in bond. Now we are in bondage. Boy, I just said something that's profound if the church could understand that. Now there's nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments. Say there's nothing wrong. Why was the law given? To reveal to us what really sin is. Paul says, I, I would not have known what covenant covetous was unless the law told me covetous was wrong and so oh that's wrong so what am i going to do i'm going to do my best not to covet and the next day <laughs> you covet <laughs> is that not true you break it 
You know how to get people to not break the commandments? Kill them. Well, that's what God did. Are you listening? We died to the law. So we're trying to keep the Ten Commandments. Now, I know some of you are straining, but that's okay. You're learning. God's trying to set you free. I mean, there's a, there's a freedom in the Spirit that not many Christians know about. What kind of day did you have? I boo-booed. What did you do? Well, I told a lie. You told a lie. Shame on you. There's a curse upon you. Hello? If you're a Christian and you tell a lie, tell me what you have to do. First John 1 9. I feel bad today. Why? Well, I broke one of the commandments. Well, you're guilty of them all, man. I tell you what, you just are <laughs> horrible. But people do not know that, and they don't know the freedom of the Spirit. That when you walk in the Spirit, you have someone who loves you, that is empowering you, and will help you, and get you to understand what Christ did on that cross is why you're able to come to the throne of God and receive the help and the grace in time of need. Let's move on. The real function, everybody say the real function of? The real function of. Okay. The law is to make men recognize and be conscious of sin. Now, basically, he's talking to the unsaved there. So we all turn our eyes to the law. Whew, boy, I blew that top one the other day. Wow. Wow. Man, wow, I murdered that person with my mouth. You go around guilty all day. Now that you're saved, keep your eyes upon Jesus. Right, Mary? Look squarely into his eyes. He is the law keeper. And when we walk with him and talk with him, the result will be pleasing to God. And we won't worry about the commandments. We're not going to break them because we're walking with the one that had them wrote or written down on tablets, but now they are written on our hearts. And Hebrews 10 tells us that. It's, it's, it's something that we have to see by revelation. And once you see it, it can deliver you. Now you can stand fast in that liberty. And these Christians in Galatians were going back, and they were actually crossing out the cross and what Christ did at Calvary for them. All right, let's look at that. Not mere perception, but an acquaintance with sin, which works towards repentance, faith, and holy character. Now, what happens is when a lost man sees the law, and he sees, he, he's breaking those laws. Now he feels guilty. Now he's conscious that he has broken the law. Now the Holy Spirit takes that and works with him. And, and then, what can I do? How can I escape this? I see, I have trespassed God's law. I'm guilty. And I feel ashamed of it. I'm conscious of this sin every day in my life. What can I do? Come to church one day. And somebody preaches on the saving grace. You're saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. And you realize, Christ paid it for me. He took my guilt. The judgment he took that should have went on me went on Christ. He took everything upon himself. And God says, accept that, receive that, and you'll be free. And you do it, and it's spiritual. All of a sudden, you feel so clean. You feel wonderful. Gosh, this is great. Now the challenge is stand fast in that liberty. 
Uh, many soul winners say you've got to get people lost first before you get them saved. Will you understand that? I think some Christians, and, 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 and if I'm wrong, correct me, but this is what I've discerned. They've never realized, they have never let the law really do its work in them. I don't know, maybe it was me or something, but I never had any problems knowing that I was a sinner. Anybody in here like that? <laughs> huh? And, and I had to move from that. The, the biggest challenge I had was to get out of that rim of thinking that I am on this side of the cross. I died to the law. I died to sin. I died to the devil. I've been taken out of the kingdom of darkness. I've been placed in the kingdom of the Son of God. I am a child of God, born again by the incorruptible seed of the Word of God. The blood has cleansed me from all sin, and I'm not walking down here trying to keep the law. I walk with the lawgiver, and he causes me to walk in a way that I don't even mess with none of that over there. It's spiritual. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay, here I am. I'm a man. Susan's right by me, right? How many of you know, because she's by me, I'm conscious of her there? How many of you think, while she's with me, that I'm going to flirt with the girls? Hmm? I'm, I'm putting it down where we live. Of course, I know none of us have ever done that, and you women have never... <clears throat> but see, when you become conscious who's walking with you and who your master is now, and you don't belong to yourself, but you belong to him, and you see and know and notice that he sees everything, your conduct changes. When Susan is with me, my conduct changes. I love it. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, how many understand what I'm talking about? There's Willie and me. How many think that Willie would flirt with the girls when I'm around? Hmm? Huh? He's walking around like this, isn't he? Huh? And I disappear all of a sudden. That's all right. He's single. He can look. But don't touch. I, I know that's corny, but you understand that, don't you? You understand that. Take your kids. They're the best in the world when mama's around and daddy's around. But the minute daddy and mama ain't around, how many know kids will be kids? Huh? See, when you're conscious of him with you every moment, that changes us. Believe me, from glory to glory. And so when, and I remember when that consciousness came into me, my behavior changed. My behavior changed when I was out in the world. Oh, I loved him, but I came to the realization he lives within me. He's right there. He knows everything about me, what I am thinking. And so when I came to that consciousness of that, I even begin to change my thinking. I realized that certain thinking was stinking thinking, and it wasn't pleasing the Lord, and I begin to discipline myself in my thinking, how I look at people, how I talk. Now, I know I act silly up here sometimes, but that's for a reason, too. We haven't found out the reason yet, but anyway, when you find, when you find out, please tell me. <laughs> okay, I hope I hadn't lost you. All right, here we go. So, what happens is we get a, we, the perception, we understand, my, we are sinners. Now you need to be saved. Now the gospel can be preached to you. And you can surrender to your life and get saved. And now you are totally justified before God. You are acquitted. You are forgiven. You are to be blessed. You are to be envious. Every sin, every charge has been dropped. And you are free. But stand fast in that liberty wherewith Christ has set us free and be not entangled again. And sometimes when you do, it's hard to get out of that. Sometimes when uh, 
some of our counselors and all meet with people. And they start talking. It's like, you ever seen a rope all tangled up? I mean, it's all tangled up, and you're trying to untangle that rope. How many has ever untangled a rope that was all tangled? That's how it is with certain people's lives. And I say, gosh, they've been going to church all their life, and they're all that tangled up. And my job is to try to get them to see how they're all tangled up and what they got to do and be willing to do if they're going to get untangled. But if they're not willing to do their part and getting themselves untangled with all this mess, there's nothing I could do, nothing God can do. You got to be willing to obey the Word of God. Now, let's move this on. I could talk more about that. I want you to turn real quick, like we got about 15 minutes. I'm going to let you go. I want to bring this up tonight. <clears throat> Turn to Proverbs chapter uh, 3. Proverbs chapter 3. Let's start with verse 1. <sighs> There's so much in here that is so great. The other night I was watching TV. You might have seen this. They had four, four people on TV, and this announcer was talking to them, and there was two uh, mayors, and there was one psychologist, and there was one other man on there that uh, supposed to understand young people. And it's and it's shocking. It's shocking the the natural world. It's shocking the carnal man. What is all of this? Our kids are going crazy. They're killing. They're shooting. Uh, these two or three or four or two kids. I forgot how many it was. Why did you shoot the guy? We were bored. <laughs> We were bored. And that's rocking the boat out there. Bored? And you had to take a man's life? Now, those kids need to be taught the Ten Commandments. To get them to see, they lost. They're breaking the righteous law of God, and one day they will have to stand before this righteous judge and be sentenced. But then we come along with the good news. But God has opened a way in which every charge against you can be taken away because every charge, every law you broke was placed on Christ, and he bore it for you. And now you can, be, you can be set free and have a new master, and his name will be Jesus, and follow him instead of the old master, Satan. Okay? Now, these kids are out there shooting people, killing people, killing little kids. Now, listen to this. And, 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 and they, they said, well, we need more money. We need a better this. We need a better that. And all of that, some of that is true. We need what we need to help people. Some of that's true. But until a man is changed inwardly, the law is not going to change you. It's not going to do it. Because <laughs> you'll fail. In fact, you'll go around the mountain more times than you ever feel like. How many has ever, now, what I've shared so far, how many have experienced that, what I said about the going around the mountain, and really you were trying to keep the law, instead of resting and trusting in your Lord and walking with Him? You understand what I'm talking about. Now, we're trying to get you set free tonight. All right, my son, forget not my law or teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. Well, on our own power, we can't do that. But that's what we are to do. But that's why we need Jesus. Because God changes the heart. I have no desire to murder anybody. I have no desire to steal. I have no desire to smoke cigars anymore. Especially that nasty snuff. Remember that? How nasty it that was? You remember that? That was horrible. You remember that? <laughs> My precious mother-in-law. Right out the window. I think I'll go this way. How many has been around somebody that dipped snuff? Oh my God. Was it you? <laughs> All right, let's move real quick. Now, here's the answer. Here's the answer. Listen, let's move on. But we know we got to have Christ. Now, now notice this. If we can do that, if we can, if we can, 
not forget the law. Now, remember, there's different laws. How many of you know about the law of love? How many of you know when you operate in the law of love, you fulfill all of the other commandments? All you out there. See, God has made it very simple. One little law. She lo she, look, the law, this young lady here. She minds her mother because she loves her mother. The law of love. You treat her right because you love the Lord and that law of love constrains you and moves you to take care of her. And sometimes you probably have to give her counsel that she don't like. Does that ever happen? Does she ever give you counsel that you don't like? Yeah, you don't have to answer me. I know she does. Anyway, I'm just trying to get, you, get her attention on that. Okay. All right, listen to this. Now, for length of days and years of a life worth living, that's in verse 2, amplified. <laughs> oh, boy, that's popular. For the length of days and years of life worth living and tranquility inward and outward and continuing through age, old age till death, these shall they add to you. These shall add to you. What are these? Now, when you read the Bible, you want to know what these are. What are these? Hmm? Find what these are. Hmm? Well, you go back to verse 1 or verse, yeah. You go back to verse 1, what are they? Forget not the law of God or the teachings, and let your heart keep his commandments, and they will add to your life. They won't get you into heaven, but they will add to your life down here. You can keep every commandment a person can and die and tell me where they're going to go. Hell. Hell. We understand that? That's why we have to be born again. Because of Adam's sin was passed down to us. And you can keep them all, but that, that sin principle is operating in us. We may do a lot of things, good things, but the motive is to make me look good when people see me do all these good things. Our motive is not to glorify God. Our motive is not. But if our motive is to glorify God, then that's, that's gold, that's silver, that's, that's, some, that's something to, 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 to understand what motivates us. Why am I doing this now? Because God has put a new nature in me. I desire to please him. I'm not doing this to get recognition from Tom or Harry or anybody else. I'm doing this to please my Lord. And sometimes he asks us to do some things that does not make us popular in the eyes of many people. Let's move on now. So, for length of days and years of a life worth living, I'm reading it again, in tranquility, inward and outward, and continuing through old age till, uh, till death, these, that is these, these what now? What did I say these were? Let's see if you're out there. Law, teachings, commandments. All right. Now we're finding out why the law was given. You try to keep them, and they will add length to your days. Believe me, how many people's in prison today if they simply would have obeyed the one law, thy shall not steal? So they stole, the law caught them, and now they got 30 years in jail. Hmm. That's hard. How many has ever been to jail and visited people in jail? I have. It's not good, believe me. All right. Now, they got to pay that debt, okay? Now, let's move on. Man, they shall add to you. Look, now, he says, love not mercy and kindness. Now, uh, that's in verse 3. Now, when you read the Amplified, love not mercy and kindness. Forget about the shutting out all hatred and selfishness. All right. Love not mercy and kindness and truth. Skip the truth. All right. Now, really, what that is about, mercy and kindness and, and, uh, and uh, uh, the truth, let not mercy and kindness and truth, uh, false, uh, hypocrisy or falsehood forsake you. Now we go back, well, what is, the, what is the opposite of that? Well, shutting out all hatred and selfishness. How many of you know that, that many of our problems comes from what? Well, our mind, selfishness. 
self-life. Man, I could go all kind of ways here. Help me, Lord. Whew. Whew. How are you, you going to address two people you love? Here I am, a pastor. I love these two people. And they don't see. They, they're beckering back and forth. Well, he don't do this or she don't do that. And they don't realize their problem is selfishness. See, how many has ever read uh, 1 Corinthians 13 in the Amplified? <laughs> Any problem we have that you're having with somebody, just read that and then forget it. Drop the matter and walk in love. Now, one may want to do it, the other, well, I'll tell you, I'll just, and devour one another. Galatians says that. If you bite and what? You bite and what? What is it? You bite and what? What does it say, Michelle? You bite and what? You bite and uh, you don't devour one another. Yeah, but you don't know what he said. I don't want to know what he said. I don't care what he says. Your job is to forgive and bless. But we make a big stink out of nothing. Tell it, Bob, believe it will. All right, let not mercy and kindness and truth depart from you. Get rid of, shut out all of that deliberate hypocrisy and falsehood and, and, and forsake it. Bind them about your neck. Write them upon the tablets of your heart. What? Write what around your heart? What? 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 Kindness, mercy, truth. Shut out all that other garbage. Put it off. That's all from the old man. In your life, you'd be surprised. You will not have a whole lot of problems. But if I don't get my way, I'll tear the world up. It seems like that's going on over there somewhere in Syria right now. It is not easy to give up power. I don't know if you understand. Some of you understand that. Some men just, they'll blow the whole country up. Boy, I ain't giving up my, I'm a president. If this country don't exist, I'll still be president. Selfishness. Woo. Move on, Bob. All right, bind them about your neck. Write them upon the tablets of your heart. Lord, write that on my heart. Let mercy, let kindness, being kind, being kind. When somebody's talking, you know what? I'm kind to listen to them. I know sometimes you're tired and all, but I try to give them my full attention. How, how do you like, you talk, talk to me. Go ahead, talk to me. Talk to me. What? What did you say? <laughs> yeah, how many, see, I know we live there. Listen, if we don't hear the truth, we'll just keep on going around. The, oh, my. How many, some, how many here wants people to, when they're talking to you, you want the, them to look at you square in the eyeball? You got blue eyes, honey. I never knew that. I remember when she was born. I like when my wife, I, I say, honey, <laughs> talk in the ear. You know I can't hear you when you're talking that way. <laughs> See, I got a good excuse. My hearing ain't like it used to be, you know. All right, let's move on, Bob. I believe it will. But listen, we got to make our mind up. I'm going to be a man of mercy. I'm going to be a man of kindness. I'm not going to be rule. R rule, that's a good one. Rude. I'm going to be kind. Has anybody ever been in here that knows that I have not been kind to you? Now, why do we have to get all shook up because somebody's doing something? That's just the old man. Shut it out. See, it's simple. It's not complicated. Because let me tell you something. You'll be, uh, help me, Lord. <laughs> Time's running out. You will be always in a fix and a mess because there's always going to be something that you're going to see that you don't like. And it's going to just bring you down here, down here. And you can't enjoy your position because you're all shook up. What Brother Bob said in the service. And I'm not going to change. I don't care what he says. How many love me now? Two people. Well, she loves me. I love it. I love it. I'm talking to myself too. 
I tell Susan, I say, honey, please do me a favor. I don't want to stand at the judgment seat of Christ. And God says, why didn't you do this, Bob? I want my wife to tell me down here. Don't do that, Bob. You need to do this. The Word says you need to do it. How many, how many is that honest yet? We have got to get honest. That's that hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Look at Brother Bob. He's so righteous. <coughs> Blessed thy children. Blessed thy. Kiss the children. Go home. Man, that congregation is going to hell. I know they are. They don't straighten up. <laughs> How many of you understand what I'm talking about? See, I know this is cruel the way I teach, but I tell you what, I am not going to go around the mountain. I'm going to right down the middle of the road. And when you teach, you're going to teach Sunday, plow me good. Don't have mercy upon the pastor. <laughs> I wear my brogans to keep my toes from getting too bad hurt. But we got to have that truth. Why? Because if you read 2 Thessalonians, because they did not love the truth, God gave them up to believe a lie. Do you believe that? I believe that. So we are cutting our own throats. Believe the truth and say, God, I can't do it, but by your power I can. Help me. And that's the way I've always walked the Christian life. Well, one more minute, I'm going to milk it down to the last minute. <laughs> All right, let's move on. This is getting good, isn't it? Now, look what it says. Verse 4. So shall you find favor, good understanding, and high esteem in the sight for, or judgment of God and man. If we do those things that we were talking about in verse 2, our days will be longer, shut out all that other garbage. Verse 5, learn, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge Him, and He will direct and make straight and plain your path. Be not wise in your own eyes. Reverently fear and worship the Lord, and turn entirely away from evil. It shall be health to your nerves and sinews and marrow and moisturing to your bones. Wow. We'll end there. Thank you. All right. What did we learn? Anything? Anybody want to comment on one thing they learned? What you learn? Keep the line. Walk the line, believe the line, walk the line.